Hey, sorry about the delay. I'm Ashley Hoover Baker. I'm from the On This Day Entertainment podcast. If you follow Taste of Reality's blog, most likely I'm the gal who wrote the article. So I am so excited to chat with Erin Hill. She's from the Getting Cozy with Erin podcast. And I am really excited to dig into the latest Bachelorette uh, with Aaron. So let's go ahead and do this. Hi. There she is. How are you? I'm good. How are you? Oh, I'm so good. I'm so excited to talk with you. I'm getting cozy. I have my Christmas blanket. I'm in front of my tree, and I am just absolutely feeling all of this. I am so excited to talk about this episode, or this season, I should say. I'm in my bathtub. I'm always in my bathtub when I go live, so. <laughs> I love it so much. I have to tell you, um, before you joined the Taste of Reality team, I actually uh, stumbled across your page because I got so into Love Island this year i'm in vegas so when i heard love island was filming in vegas i was like all in oh, and then i saw so many of the people join you and even my boyfriend trey oh my gosh <laughs> i love him <laughs> trey is such a sweetheart oh my gosh he blew me away they all did honestly they were all so kind and genuine i had the best time with them i love it i love what you do welcome to the taste of reality yeah. team thank you so much thank oh you. yay so is your like niche, uh, like kind of like dating reality shows? Yeah, definitely. <laughs> okay, so let me get to know just everything about you. Like, are you married? Yeah, so um, I've been married for almost 10 years and we are still in our honeymoon. I know it's like crazy, but we're still like on that honeymoon phase. It's never ending at, at this point, I feel like. <laughs> and um, I know it's a blessing. Especially in quarantine. Yes, exactly. I know all the marriages that are ending. It's like so heartbreaking. But um, we have two kids, a boy and a girl. And oh, they yay. Are, they're five and eight. And so this summer has been challenging having them home 24-7. But I got through it. And I'm always drinking <laughs> now. Yes. Always. So, yeah. Well, I'm enjoying a nice beer because um, I drink like a frat boy. So Newcastle, if you'd like to sponsor me, I'm ready yes. for that endorsement. Let's get a cheers. Let's get a virtual cheers. Cheers, right? babe. Oh, my gosh. Cheers. Sadly, this is like pretty much like the majority of the human contact I've had in way too long. So thank you. Yeah, of course. And you're in Vegas. I'm in California, so not too far. So we're West Coast girls. West Coast. We're in California. I'm actually an hour south of San Francisco, basically. Oh, so like lovely. around Tracy, that area. Um, they call it Central Valley, right? So oh, how, not bad. No, no fires, I hope, in your area? There have been not too close to us, but it's been pretty bad um, around like Napa and, and areas like that. So Oof. yeah, we've been very, very grateful, though, blessed and grateful. For that. I mean, just the air quality in Vegas because of all the fires in California. I can't even imagine, like, as somebody with asthma, I'm like, how do people survive there? <laughs> I know. It's really, really bad. I mean, there are days where it's, like, worse than, you know, Asia or something like that. And you're just like, are you serious? But it's just our new normal. And since we're always wearing masks anyway, I mean, there you go. You're at least protecting yourself from the bad air quality, too. Exactly. You know, there are really definitely some positives to um, <clears throat> wearing masks. And one of them is not hearing men tell you to smile more. Oh, Cheers yes. to that. Yes, that is true. Yeah. Yeah. Definitely. Men, can you stop telling us to fucking <laughs> smile? Thanks. I'll smile I when I want to. Yeah, make right? me smile. I know. I go live often, as you do, you know, as well. And I get comments all the time, like, you just need to smile more. And I'm like, um, if I'm talking about something sad or depressing, I'm not going to just slap on, like, a fake smile. Like, if I'm smiling, it's because I want to smile. You know right, I mean? yeah. Thank you for not being a robot, Erin. We appreciate Bye. that. I have feelings. <laughs> <laughs> so let's talk about our feelings for this new Bachelorette. Um, yes. I have to tell you, I'm so – I feel like – I started off when The Bachelor and The Bachelorette was new. I was all in. 
And I'm kind of like a shitty girlfriend who found like somebody who I thought was better. And that was Bravo. So like, I've been like Bravo obsessed for like a while and it's just yeah. become really gross and I don't like it anymore. Just very problematic people that are celebrated. And I feel myself right. crawling back to the bachelor nation and I'm like, yeah. please take me back. Like, I know I was shady, but I, I take me back, please. I need you. Yeah. Yeah, that's the wonderful thing about Bastard Nation. They will always accept you back. They will always take you back. You know, that's not a problem. You always, the door is always open. <laughs> oh, well, I'm so glad to be back. I meant to start the season um, on episode one, but due to a series of unfortunate events, I just ended up so far behind. Then I realized there was going to be a... Well, and then Claire didn't get a whole lot of good press. What was your opinion of her? Yeah, you know, I am an OG. I've been watching since season one. So I saw Claire on everything that she was, every, you know, season she was on, Bachelor in Paradise, I saw all of it. So I know who she is, and I kind of knew, like, the person that she was. But I was really hopeful that she had grown and become more mature mm. <laughs> in the six years since, you know, Juan Pablo season. And watching it back now, I'm thinking... Yeah, not really. I mean, you know, not really. So, but I have to say, I'm very happy that she didn't waste our time. And she did leave with Dale. I'm very happy that she did. Because now we have the gift of Tasha, And that's what I've been calling her. She is an absolute gift. <laughs> oh my gosh. Like, honestly, she really is just like such a bright spot in a really dark time. Like, it's just like, just the climate of our country and just everything's just been like the tension you could just cut with a knife. And yeah. then she literally comes in with these gorgeous eyes, this bright beaming smile and a personality that just is even bigger than any well, of that. Right. Like talk yeah. about the whole package. Yeah, she really does. She has it. And I have been a fan of hers ever since she was on Colton season. I, um, I don't know if you, did you watch Colton season? No, I honestly haven't watched since Juan Pablo, I think, except for Listen to Your Heart, which I was obsessed with. Yes, I love Listen to Your Heart. Um, so by, the way, by the way, I haven't announced this yet, but I'm going to have Rudy and Julia on Sunday together. Judy. <laughs> Ooh, oh my gosh, that's huge. Good for you. You heard it yeah. here first. They're sweethearts. Oh my gosh, I love them to death. Um, so what I was going to say is on Colton season, when she was cut, like top mm -hmm. three, she was actually consoling Colton. And I thought, that is a woman. That is a woman right there. You know what I mean? That was a boy and she is consoling you. She is a woman, she deserves a man. And from then on, I was like pro Tasha. Every time I saw her, I rooted for her. So for her to be the lead, it's so deserving. It's so, oh. so deserving. Well, and it's funny because as I was watching it, I was just thinking, I, and I don't know Claire that well. Like, I mean, it's been so long. I can't say I know her, her, her journey yeah. um, all that well. But if people didn't really like Claire, I can't imagine really enjoying the show. Like, you really have to love The Bachelor or The Bachelorette to be invested right. in the relationships. Absolutely. I even told my good friends, I was like, you know what? If she hadn't left with Dale, I probably would have stopped watching, to be honest with you. Because I was so offended by how she treated the other guys. How it was just very much like, well, I'm here for me. I'm going to do what I want to do. You know, I start by ruffling any feathers, but I just felt like it was very selfish. I just felt like, you know, yes, you are there for you, but you're also the lead. You're also like this, you know, person that we need to look up to and respect and all that. And you're just not getting that from me right now because you're not treating them with respect. And they deserve that. Look how much they've given up. I go off. I'm very passionate about this. <laughs> well, I mean, it's 16 guys, now 20 guys, that have yeah. literally, like, literally stopped their life. So, like, maybe you can clarify this for me. Where are they, like, in quarantine? Is this before, like, anything was shut down? Or no, has no, this been filmed no, since? No, I mean, they were filming in, I want to say, July. Um, July and August. So, oh. we were in total shutdown mode across the country. So they just wow. created like this bubble, basically. Mm -hmm. They um, created this bubble and they just kind of had Tasha come in after Claire and Dale decided that they were gonna leave that, you know, bachelor bubble. Wow, that's fascinating. Gosh, yeah. and what a time to be on a dating show. I thought that with Love Island, like, oh, I yeah. mean, you can't date right now. I mean, you yeah. can, but like, it's, it's complicated. Not it's, not, it's the not the same. same. 
Well, yeah. I mean, I'm a former dating coach and I, you know, everybody's been asking me like, how can you date right now? What's the safest way? What should we do? And it's just, there's nothing, this is unprecedented. You know, it's just completely unprecedented right now. Oh my gosh. Yeah. I am so fortunate to be married and like you, like right? I, <laughs> Not, I don't only love my husband, I like him so much to yes. where, like, in all these months, like, one time I went to bed at, like, 5 o'clock just so I could have some privacy. I was like, I just need to be by myself. I'm tired. I'm going to bed. And I just, like, ride in my room for hours. But totally I'm like, right. literally, if that's the worst it's been, I'm freaking good. <laughs> right? No, I completely understand. I escape to my tub often. And whether it has water or not, it's, like, my haven. I love it. I love that. I um, don't have a tub and it's oh. very shameful. Yeah, I know. I'm very, I'm living with major envy. I grew up in a house with like a huge tub. So like, I, I've never been satisfied since. Well, this is my first house that I've had a tub in a very long time. So I was where you were. Yeah. <laughs> and I will we'll eventually get one. That's the goal. Right. So right. maybe you can tell me about some of the guys just because I don't know them. And like, I saw an article about the guy Blake, who yeah. when Tasha came out and said, you know, I'm going to need you to be patient with me. The bearded guy, I guess, because there's two Blakes. Yeah. I'm very new to all the guys. So I actually have a little cheat sheet here that I'm like <laughs> going to be referencing. But like, yeah. do people love Blake? I saw that they were talking about him, like maybe being a bachelor. Like, what am I missing? Yeah, so um, Claire and Blake had a few moments, you know, like uh -huh. Blake actually slid into her DMs over the summer when Claire was um, posting about her mom being sick and in the, oh. in the home. Yeah, and so Claire kind of like chastised him for it at first, but then was like, thank you for doing that because I needed that human connection that, you know, she, it, it meant a lot to her. So I think he kind of won us over because he was kind of like, broke the rules, but she was okay with it because she loved the fact that like, he didn't care, right? He could have been kicked off the show, but he wow. didn't care. He wanted her to know, hey, I'm thinking about you. I care about this more than like being on the show. So oh. that kind of like won us all over, I feel. Okay, yeah, I'm totally down with that. I didn't know that yeah. backstory and that definitely, cause I was like, he seems just like a nice guy, but I'm like, I just don't understand why people would be that passionate about him. He just, <laughs> but you know, if he, if that was his commitment to Claire, bless his yeah. heart. And yes. let's just talk about Jason real fast, the linebacker oh who ended up leaving this first episode. Did you see that coming? You know, he really had a deep connection with Claire after that one-on-one um, -on -one date that they kind of had like a therapy session. Oh, wow. And I think like he kind of looked at Claire as his therapist. And I think there was like some sort of bond that formed there. And so I was, I applauded him. I thought his, his leave, his exit was very classy. Mm -hmm. He was very respectful. He basically said, you know, if she's still on my mind, I shouldn't be here trying to form a connection with you. And I applauded him. I thought that was great. That is a man. Like Tasha said, that is mm -hmm. a man. And of course she was bummed because he's super cute. You know, he's really, he's got a lot to offer. So I was like, that was awesome. I think he left in a perfect way. Like he couldn't have done it any better. So, like, not only was I just so turned on, I mean, obviously so hot, but, like, I was so <laughs> turned on by his emotional intelligence and his, like, yeah. ability to express himself. And I think right. that's just, like, such an amazing thing to see on TV. And maybe because I'm new to Bachelor Nation again that, like, just the normalization of, like, guys talking about their feelings was just so nice. And seeing yes. him and a couple of the guys say their goodbyes and just seeing those bonds and those really tight relationships, it moved me. Yeah, and I think also, I feel like the guys on this season are much more bonded to each other because they didn't have a lot of time with Claire. Claire mm -hmm. was always with Dale. Claire was always, like, canceling stuff, right? She was always canceling. She canceled more events than I've ever seen anyone ever. Like, she wow. just didn't care. She just didn't care. She was just like, yeah, no, we're not going to do that anymore, even though you've been waiting all day. I just, I was, I was so appalled by her lack of respect in general well thank goodness she left because these guys deserve a chance they all seem well i say all of them um and we're gonna need to talk about the new guys in just a second but like they all seem like really good dudes is there anybody who just like to you stands out as just like an a plus guy that you think um we'll, we'll talk about brendan later but like anybody besides yeah. brendan that you think just like might be the one um i really like her 
connection with Ivan. I think Ivan is just like totally smitten with her already, which is so adorable. Oh um, but he seems very respectful. And mm -hmm. I think that he'd be a good partner. I think he's so cute too. I really do think he's cute. And she, you can tell she thinks he's cute. You know, like it's, mm -hmm. it's really cute, their chemistry. I keep saying cute, but it's cute, okay? It's cute. <laughs> it's cute. They're cute. Um, I'm trying to think who else. Um, I mean, definitely, uh, um, oh Lord. Yeah, Brennan for sure. But I like easy. I like how easy is just like, you are my type, you are my speed, you are like who I'm looking for. I just like how he's being so honest and upfront. So I really like that. I feel like the guys are just being very transparent, which I really appreciate a lot. It's so hot to see guys just be that like <laughs> cool and respectful to a woman. I've been married for quite some time now with my husband for a very long time. And like, I guess I just don't really see a whole lot of good relationships that aren't like marriages in real life. I just hear like yeah. really dysfunctional stories from my single friends about like these like total tools that they date. So to see these guys with like amazing jobs and they're hot and they're kind and they seem to have things going for them. And I doubt right. like any of them have like 13 dead bodies buried in their backyard. Yeah. Like it's super right. sexy. Yeah, definitely. And I think that, you know, since the, the show skewed a little older, I mm -hmm. really think that that's why we're getting the more mature, more established, mm -hmm. you know, these guys are confident. Like, like I said, I'm a former dating coach and I always said, to my single clients, you know, date guys that already have their shit together. Because if you don't, they're gonna be looking to you to kind of get them together, or they're gonna be latching onto you if you have your shit together. <laughs> so, exactly. you know, yeah. So these guys do, they have their stuff together. They know, you know, what they're doing in life. And they're literally there for that reason to fall in love. And that is right. so refreshing. I literally just got chills. Because I feel like the guys just haven't been like this in the past. Like, it is so nice to see this. Well, and if anybody's deserving of it, it's our girl, Tasha. Like, to see her 100%. smile. And when those when the uh, car came up with the new guys and Chris was like, here, we've got more yeah. guys for you. I was just like, she deserves this. I want yes. all the happiness for her. I was so happy because I have to be honest, I was very upset that the first time we saw her was coming out of the pool, very sexy and very, like, I'm sorry, that's not how you introduce a bachelorette. You know, that's how you introduce someone on Paradise or Love Island, right? But right. But not as the new bachelorette, as, like, carrying this torch, right? So it bothered me a lot. So the fact that mm -hmm. they, like, had her do the traditional limos coming in. Now, granted, I wish there had been more guys. I wish she had had the 31 total guys that Claire had, you know? But right. whatever, I'll take it, 20, it's, it's fine. And I love, love, love that she canceled the rose ceremony. I literally I, clapped. I was so happy for that. You know, we just, it was so, everything was just so different. And the fact that they took like 20 minutes out of the episode to give it yeah. to um, Dale and Claire, I was like, you know what? Oh. We need more time. This was a really, really good move. And I am definitely applauding that with you. Oh, yes. And let's talk about that very awkward moment when Claire screamed babies. And Dale just kind of completely <laughs> looked over it, right? Like, did that? yeah, that didn't happen. I'm just going to keep talking to acknowledge this. Yeah, that was one of those, like, super awkward moments that, like, we'll see in GIFs. Like, we'll see that meme for so many years oh, yeah. to come. Like, that meme yeah. is going nowhere fast. And for it's sure. kind of amazing, and I'm here for it. But I have to say, because she is older, she doesn't care if she's married before she has babies, which I appreciate that because – she is older, you know, and she does want kids. So she's, you know, she's saying, hey, whatever comes first. So I can, I can appreciate that. <laughs> I love that too. I'm absolutely here for it. Do it your way, however it works out for you that makes you happy. Yeah. So um, of the four new guys, um, there's Noah, the guy with the stash. Yeah. There is Montel, who I just know is the guy with the pink jacket. There was Peter, who I don't know if you heard, was just diagnosed with COVID yesterday. I did hear that. And he got in a car accident. It's like, bam, bam, double whammy. Wow. I know. I don't know much more than that, but that sucks. And I'm it sucks so, so bad. Well, and he said he had been like super careful, cautious, had been like really following every protocol, taking it very seriously. Yeah. 
And that makes me like just feel so much worse for him because they're out people out living their best life. And if he was really trying to be careful, like that really sucks. I know, I know. So shout out to him. But yeah, speedy recovery. Person probably. I'm guessing maybe he's not the person. I don't know, but we'll see. We'll have to see who she chooses in the end. If she chooses anybody, um, I just cannot wait to to get this started. But I, what did you think of them getting the guys in speedos again after the whole strip dodgeball thing? I just. I missed the dodgeball because I didn't watch earlier this season, but I did hear about just how sexist and misogynistic and just horrible it was. So just me as a feminist, I see this and I'm like, getting guys down into their speedo is just like, I know it would feel demeaning and belittling to me. Like as somebody with like intelligence, a personality, a sense of humor, like I'm not really great with that. So it was not a cute look, but I have to say it was really nice seeing um, one of my favorite guys. Ooh, I'm trying to think of his name. Riley. um, When he knocks Spencer. Like, oh, my God. Spencer is totally that guy that you meet. You're like, oh, just like Tasha. He's so hot. Like, he's so hot. It hurts. But the second you get to know him, he, like, goes from, like, being an 11 to a zero. Like, (laughs) I'm just not impressed. So seeing him get knocked in the mouth by my man was not bad. I agree. I agree. I I really like Spencer, though. Um, There's something about him. He actually reminds me of Derek Pace, the one that just got engaged. You know who Derek is, right? I do. Yeah. Okay, yeah. He reminds me of Derek, and she kind of had a fling with Derek. So I'm wondering if she, like, sees that in him, too, possibly. Ooh. I don't know. Ooh, that's but, deep. Right? But, you know, sometimes girls, like, will do that, right? They'll be like, oh, he reminds me of someone, so let me see where this is going to go. So I think that's probably why he got the first impression as well. But he did have – he did leave the best impression on her. So I was not shocked that he got the fifth rose or whatever. I, I'm not either, and that's not even when I started to dislike him. Like, I was like, okay, he came out, and he said, you know, the really kind of shitty remark to the guys. But honestly, I thought it was really kind of crappy the way that the guys who had been there for Claire responded to the new guys. Like, it's not the new guys' fault for being new. Like, right. if they were in that position, they would want to be welcomed with open. I thought it was very right. immature for them to be, like, silent yeah. and, like, stone-faced. Yeah. Yeah, I agree. I don't think that was very nice of them. But I mean, I do understand how they have like the camaraderie, you know, they had been there together for, like I said, Claire was knocking them a lot of time. So they had a lot of time to bond. I think a lot of these guys are really tight. If you look at their Instagrams, you know, their social media, they are like posting of the other people all the time because they're like, they feel like they're like a little community, you know, like a little tight little bubble. So I get that. I understand that. But and then Spencer did come in with a, quite an attitude, though, I have to say. But Noah, Noah really shocked me because do you remember he came in and then he took a lo- another look, like a second look at her? I was like, that was smooth as hell, Noah. Uh, he had my, like, I was like, okay, that guy, uh, that was smart. <laughs> well, and I just love A Star is Born so much. So, like, just the reference back to the, like, I was like, oh, my God, I can't believe he did that reference. I just loved it so much. I was so here it for it. great. I think that was my favorite part of the show, honestly, because it was so unexpected. And I cannot recall anybody ever doing that. Well, like, it was the only, like, one that was memorable. Yeah. Because uh, Spencer's so hot. The other guys, like the one wore a pink jacket, which literally that's all I know about him is the fact that he likes bright accessories. (laughs) And um, the other guy, uh, Peter, the COVID guy, um, I'm probably a little older than you, but um, are you knowledgeable of New Kids on the Block? Oh, my God, of course. I think we're the same age, to be honest with you. You're really? I'm 40. <laughs> oh, my gosh. Like, I'm older than everybody. I'm 40. So I'm like, I'm sure I'm older than you. Me too. Me too. You're bro. 40? Yeah. Yay. Cheers. <laughs> Cheers to 80s babies. <laughs> so, like, did actually. Peter? What was that? 78, actually. Oh, 70. Oh, nice. So, um, oh, the, the sequel. <laughs> I love it. Um, so does Peter totally remind you of, um, of Danny Wood from New Kids on the Block? Oh, I can see that now. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, totally. Like where I wasn't attracted to Danny <laughs> when totally. I was a kid. I was a total Joey Joe kind of gal. 
But, like, with age, Danny, like, rocks my world, and I think he's so hot, and I think Peter looks a lot like him. He has definitely aged well. Oh, my God, shut up, Jim. Jim is so sweet. <laughs> Ooh, yes, yes, though. yes. <laughs> I love it. Here, I'm a little <laughs> behind on here. Um, Aaron looks 29. I agree. <laughs> Oh my gosh, I was so far back on this conversation, I didn't see any of these. If anybody has any questions or anything you guys uh, want us to talk about, there's that little question guy yes. down at the bottom. Um, so yeah. Spencer got the first impression, Rose, but yeah. then after the splash ball um, first date, were you surprised that uh, it ended up being easy that got the group, Rose, or did you see that one coming? I think Easy was just really open and honest about how he was feeling. So I was really happy he got the rose, actually. I was hoping she was not going to give Spencer the, uh, the date rose, too. You know, because that's like, you already have a target on your back. You put another rose, it's like another target. It's just mm -hmm. too much. Kind of like what Claire did with Dale, right? It was just too much. So I'm really glad that she gave it to Easy. I thought maybe she'd give it to um, Ivan. Uh, mm. Or, I mean, she had definitely, like, said these guys made a, an impression so that was good she at least you know um uh talked about them individually but yeah i thought easy that definitely deserved the rose i thought he did a great job he's so cute and he's like just he's like cute. such like a warm guy like i bet he's a really good hugger like you know he yeah. gives like great hugs <laughs> i feel like all these guys are and they're all tall they're all tall drink of water mm -hmm. yeah and i think i would have to tall. say yeah. Oh my God. She's so beautiful. Like, yeah. first of all, she's got the just beautiful face and then girl's body is insane. Yeah. Yeah. I, so I, like I said, I was upset that she was out of the pool. Like the first time we saw her, but mm -hmm. I did hear on another podcast today that she agreed. She didn't know that was going to be her introduction. She thought she was going to be, you know, coming out of the limo, just like all the bachelorettes. So I don't like that the show did that. It felt like that kind of started her off on like a sour note a little or like, you know, not as respectful maybe. So I'm glad she agreed. I, I'm, I was happy to hear that like she agreed that that was not the best way to present her. Right. Yeah. It was very like, I mean, it was amazing. It was like very yeah. fast times at Ridgemont High. Like, yes, yeah. I'm absolutely here for it. But, um, yeah, no, not the way that she, she deserves better. She's more than just a hot bod. Right. I agree with you. And she's, she's so smart. And in, like when she talks, she's so intelligent. She's so witty. She just has it all together. These guys are lucky. They are lucky. 100%. Right? And they know it. Like I really, like they, they act like they know it. They're like watching them like see her, they were just like, oh my God. And it was so sweet. I loved it. I loved it too. That was one of another favorite part of the show for me too. Oh, I such loved, a highlight. It was so genuine. It was so genuine and like yes. beautiful. I loved it. Well, and speaking of genuine, let, let's go to the first one-on-one -on -one date with Brendan. Like, is he like the nicest, most like gen? I mean, you said it. He's just like the realest dude ever. Yeah, he is. It's funny, um, there was like someone roasting him a little bit, saying that like he didn't talk much or whatever, but I felt like he didn't need to talk. I mean, he was just, he was there, you know? He was present, he was listening. He was just, he was completely and totally there. Like, I loved that, you know? And he was, I think he was getting mad at Chris Harrison because he kept cock blocking. <laughs> that was so funny though, when he kept up when they were on the horseback. Uh, going so around funny. and Chris just kept on popping up. That was just such a fun throwback. He has never done that. As I mean, I can't remember him ever doing that, but I felt like it was um, saying, hey, there's no staff here, okay? I'm the staff. Like, I need to do everything. <laughs> it was so good. So, like, okay, maybe um, this is just, like, my very, like, middle class um, upbringing. I think of La Quinta as La Quinta Inn as, like, totally. Motel 6. Yep. Is this like a fancy Motel 6? Is this a different resort that's of zero affiliation? Yeah, this is actually affiliated with the Waldorf Astoria. Fancy. Ooh, that makes a lot more sense. Because I'm like, yeah. this is not like the budget motel that my family stayed at on road trips. No, this is like a high-end resort in Palm Springs. Probably the highest-end resort there. So they wow. have like 
56 pools or something like that. It's nuts. It's huge. Yeah. So I think everybody has like their own area. Do you know what I mean? And Tasha was saying like nobody ever saw anybody because you're so spread out. And there's, it's just a huge, huge, beautiful place. Oh my gosh. And like, how wonderful would it be during these times to be in a situation like that? Like, right. um, I really tried cause I'm in Vegas and, um, any press that went like one-on-one -on -one to the Love Island people would get a COVID test and they could go in and like talk to humans face to face without That's masks. So cool. And I was like, I just really want to talk to humans. Like it would be <laughs> so nice to just like meet somebody. I'm such a social person. Yeah. So, I mean, yes. among so many other reasons, this has just been such a challenge. So, again, I'm so glad you're here and we can talk yes. to each other and feel somewhat I normal, except you you're in your bathtub. Oh, I yeah, am. of course, I <laughs> which I love the fact that you do your tub. It's so good. So, tub. when Brendan said that he had been married and divorced, Tell me what was going through your mind and your heart and everywhere. Oh my gosh. I teared up because I thought, okay, he doesn't know that she is in the same boat. Like he doesn't know, you know what I mean? And then I just felt like, oh my gosh. And he's being so honest and open right now. And it just touched me. I just thought, man, men can learn from this. Like it's okay to share your feelings, you know, feel your feelings. <laughs> And I just was so proud of him for just being so, like, open. Right. And he was just, he was open and just his story was so, like, relatable. You're yeah. with somebody forever. And I thought it was so beautiful that there was no, um, no cheating, that there was no, like, mm -hmm. drama. And it was, again, yeah. just so relatable and just, like, Yes, his parents couldn't understand, like, why don't you make it work? And it's like, no, you should be in love. You should, yeah. you should, like, get butterflies. And if you don't yeah. feel that, well, and then, of course, the kid thing. Yeah, yes. And I wonder, I wonder if she just, if she couldn't have them or if she decides she didn't want them. Because I feel like, one, it's like, one, one makes them an asshole, right? And one makes them, like, understandable. No, I'm kidding. I'm pretty sure it's that she, <laughs> I'm pretty sure she just, like, changed her mind, you know? And funny enough, this happened to my uncle. My uncle married a woman that said she wanted children. And then, like, two years into the marriage, decided she didn't. I mean, we're allowed to change our mind, but that's a big thing. Like, he is a huge family man. He wanted lots of kids. So he wound up leaving her because that was a deal breaker for him, which is understandable, right? Of course. Of course. Yeah. And the fact that they both want kids, the fact that she said she wanted five and he was like, okay, he was on board. Yeah. I was like, we could do this. Like, make this happen. I know. I thought they were going to like exit left, you know, and like follow along with Claire and Dale. At that point, I'm like, well, shit, they're all on the same page. <laughs> well, and it's crazy because she did say that, like, she he could be the one. She could marry him. I'm like, are we doing this again already? Like, right. did she fight? But the thing is, like, and I say simple, like, is, like, the biggest compliment. He just seems like a really easy, simple guy. Just, like, yeah. he wants the easy things in life. He doesn't need anything to be, you know, anything fancy. Yeah. Just a real honest, loving relationship. And they deserve that. <laughs> Yes, and that's what you want. I mean, she even said, she's like, you know, I'm a little crazy. I need a guy that's, like, low-key laid back. And she's absolutely right. Because that's how, I feel like that's why my husband and I work out so well. I'm such a social butterfly, and he just loves to watch me be that way, right? And he's just, he's always by my side, but he doesn't want to be in the mix and all of that. And so right. that is such a good pair. You know, it's such a good right. match. Yeah. My husband hates people. So it works out really well that I am very social and I can like go into a room and like make friends and just kind of just make right. conversation with people. Yeah. He just hides and keeps his head down and he's always very polite, but it's a balance that works for us. So if this is what Tasha needs in her life, like I hope she gets it. And if it's from Brendan, good for her. Right, right. And I feel like Spencer is kind of like a spotlight kind of guy. Mm -hmm. So that may not work. That might be kind of, you know, I don't know. So we'll just have to see. But yeah, I love her with Brendan. I think it's a great, great match. And just um, the chemistry. They had great chemistry, right? Already. It was just, it was yeah. so, 
the amount of courage it took for him to like get tell his story I just I have so much just love for him already like he is what I want to see more of on TV like I said I'm coming from like the Bravo universe where it's a lot of celebration of trash humans and like sure you might get like a bad seed like Spencer seems like a real piece of shit but like <laughs> These are good people who, like, work hard. They're not, like, super privileged people that just keep on getting things handed to them and that just, like, misbehave. Like, these are people who just want to find love and have been working. And, like, I feel like the boxes in their life have been checked, you know? Like, they've got the job. They've got the the life. They're just missing the partner. Yeah, exactly. And Tasha's the same. You know, Tasha is an influencer, and she Mm -hmm. flies around the world. So she just wants someone to do that with her. And then they settle down, right? It's like, perfect. I mean, I really have faith that she'll find, maybe not get engaged, but at least find someone that she will continue the journey with. I hope so. And especially, I doubt they give them any more episodes. So like, are they just like short five episodes because of Claire? Interesting. You know, 2020 is an unprecedented year. So it only makes sense that the Bachelorette format has been thrown through a loop also. Yeah. Well, you know why? It's because Matt James, you know, he has to start. It's what, January 4th? Yes. Yeah. So they have to give us like a little bit of break, right, before Matt James. But I can't wait for his season, too. That's going to be incredible. Yeah. Like I said, I am diving right back into the deep end of Bachelor Nation. I'm here for it. Um, Jim did not like Spencer being called lunch meat. Yeah. <laughs> I didn't really get it. Like, it can't be a good thing. It's, like, processed and fake. So, like, I guess the analogy yeah. is that he's, like, phony. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And I don't remember exactly who said it, but he was like, we call guys like you lunch meat, you know, where I grew up. And I'm just like, that's not really fair, you know? It's, like, it's hard enough to be the new guy and – yeah, he's got a little chip on his shoulder, a little attitude or whatever. You can, like, put him in his place without giving him, like, a horrible nickname. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. No, I felt that way. And I do – I think it was um, Riley who did that, which I do really like Riley a lot, the attorney. I think he's so he's cute funny. and seems so together. But, yeah, yeah. I name-calling is just – it's not sexy to me. No. In fact, I heard that Tyler C. and Riley are, like, good friends now. I guess uh, Tyler C., not Tyler C, like the one that was on um, Claire's season, but the other Tyler C, the one we all know, right? Right. Tyler Cameron, he reached out to Riley because he really liked him on uh, Claire's, you know, first episodes or whatever. And uh-huh. now they're like good friends. It's so cute. Oh, my God. That's adorable. That is so funny. <laughs> I love it. So what do you see uh, happening in the future of uh, The Bachelorette this season? Well, I think Tasha's going to really give everyone a good chance, you know, a mm-hmm. shot, which I really appreciate, even though she's probably getting very smitten with Brendan. Um, that's pretty obvious. But I think she sees a lot of potential in a lot of guys there. So I think it's not going to be like a one horse race. I think we're going to have like a good three, four, five guys that were wondering which direction she's going to go. Where's her heart leading her, you know? And um, she even said on, on the same podcast that I was listening to, Bachelor Happy Hour that she, it was really hard for her to give that first impression rose because her heart was not with any certain person at that moment because she was so overwhelmed. I mean, can you imagine walking into a room of 16 guys instead of like having the traditional, like meet them one at a time and you can kind of like process a little bit, but she was just, (laughs) she just walked in right to the lion's den and and yeah so it just it started so quickly so i think her her brain was just like on overload and she just kind of had to like make a quick kind of a quick decision a quick um, right choice there but i do feel like she's going to give a lot of guys a lot of uh chances which i love oh so happy i'm so excited to see the journey of all of these people right? all these beautiful people Good Lord, as I just sit in my house, like, getting hairier and fatter by the second, (laughs) just seeing all these, like, well-kept, fit people is just a really nice reminder of what life could be like. If I gave a shit still. I got a haircut today, like, the first time in probably six months, and I'm just like, I feel human again. This is so nice. 
You know, it's so funny. Um, my hairdresser has been so nice to come to my house, which I appreciate so much. Oh. I have multiple sclerosis, so I have to just be so careful. Plus, I think I had COVID in December, and it was like, oh I don't know God. what the hell. Like, the doctors didn't know what to do with me. It was like I was sick for like a month and a half. It was just horrible. Wow. So, like, whatever it was, I can't go through that again. But, yeah. like, you said with your haircut, like, I, again, just like Newcastle, if anybody from the Press on Nail universe would like to sponsor me, <laughs> um, Press on Nails have been, like, such a gift in quarantine. Like, are they perfect? No. But, like, things like this, it really feels like I, I feel like a human being. And that's a good thing. My neighbor actually does nails in her garage. And so she's been sneaking us over. Of course, we wear a mask and stuff like that. Of course. But my nails have been, like, on point this entire quarantine. I feel very blessed. <laughs> Good for you. Yeah. It's the little things that like, like, I, I don't know why I'm whispering. If I shaved my legs, I'd probably feel a lot better, but I'm like, yeah, why? Yeah. Why? And it's getting cold. I'm like, what's the point? I know. Right. And if your husband doesn't care, that's really all that matters. He wouldn't notice. Like if I like dyed my hair black, he'd be like, there looks something different about you and would never know what it was. Like, Oh my God, mine is so observant. I like do, I like pluck a different brow, like I, you know, um, eyebrow and he's just like, whoa, what happened? I'm like, what are you talking about? Oh my God, that's so funny. Okay, so our husbands are so similar yet so different so apparently. Different. Yes, he's, so, he's like Metro, I mean, it's hysterical. He like cares more about what he looks like than any guy I've ever met. He's a good oh, looking guy, so I'll give it to him, but. You know, so we appreciate our men. However they come to us, as long as they're good, like, it's just so funny, okay. like, just seeing so many trash humans on TV. Like, Bravo is notorious for having the worst humans ever. Like, there's this show <laughs> that they just aired a rapist. Like, he had gone Ew. to jail for rape, and he has children with one of the women on the show, and therefore he's just on again. I'm like... I don't oh, want to wow. see this guy on my screen. Like, there's a, just no, too many problematic. Southern Charm. It should be called oh. Southern No Charm. Like, very oh. problematic. Like, it's really bad. Oh, no. That's awful. Yeah. And that's just, like, one of a million problematic shows. So being, like, in, like, presence of, like, good people, it's so nice. Oh, my gosh. Oh, Barbara, you're so sweet. Thank you. I think he's adorable, too. <laughs> Aaron and Aaron. Yeah, his name's Aaron, too, by the way. Oh, my God, that's adorable. Oh, my God. Now I love you guys even more. That's oh, perfection. We go by A&E to everyone else, just so it's not confusing. <laughs> Oh, that's so funny. My sister's Elizabeth, and I'm Ashley, so we're A&E also. Oh, yeah, there you go. <laughs> My sister from another mister here. So um, if people aren't already following you, let everybody know where they can find you, your podcast. Yeah, so actually, if you click just um, Getting Cozy with Aaron, you can follow me right from here, but that oh, is perfect. my Instagram handle right there. And the reason I say it's getting cozy is because I'm Southern, um, born and raised, and anytime like someone comes over to my house, I'm like, come on in, get cozy, and that's kind of where that came from. So um, my whole thing is like, stay cozy, get cozy, stay cozy, and that's kind of like where that comes from. So. Where from? Where are you from in the South? Um, so I was born in Florida, raised in North Carolina and Kentucky. So when I'm drinking, my accent comes out uh, a little bit, but I'm kind of California girl now, you know, so it's not as uh, obvious. But yeah, if I'm drinking, you'll hear my, my twain. <laughs> sure. How are we not the same person? I'm from Louisiana and you would never know it until I'm wasted. And then all of a sudden okay. the y'alls are just flying everywhere. And right. like, I'll do y'all are together, y'all are, and people just can't handle it. Like people's minds yeah. explode on the West Coast with that one. I love that. You need like a sweatshirt that says y'all are. That's awesome. That's awesome. <laughs> I've never heard that ever. <laughs> You know, it's funny because you're on the West Coast, too. People ask me all the time, like, oh, my God, you have to be from L.A. And I'm like, well, yeah, L.A. is in Louisiana. They're like, oh, I thought you meant L.A., like Los Angeles. I'm like, mm, no, no, girl, no. This is Shellnet, Louisiana right here. Like, I population, like, Aww. 800. Jim is giving me a shout-out. Yes, the people that follow me, I call my cozies. 
Oh, yeah, cozies. Yeah. Well, cozies, I'm Ashley. I also work for Taste of Reality, just like Erin. Um, I'm actually from the On This Day Entertainment podcast, where we are fans of all reality TV, celebrity, all kinds of news. So we're the fanny pack. So uh, cozies, welcome to the fanny pack. Fanny oh. pack, welcome to the cozies. We're all just going to have a great old time and enjoy life in the Bachelor Nation. Yes, one big happy family. So does your husband watch Bachelor with you when you watch? My husband no, and I just either. don't see eye to eye on TV, which is fine. One thing we both love um, is Top Chef on Bravo. He, um, well, was a chef of COVID, but um, he was a working chef until um, COVID hit on the strip. So we were very, very into that show, but, um, but that's it. Yeah, they're the fanny pack. Gym. I love that. So <laughs> I was like, we're fan girls, we're fan boys, we're fan people. Fanny pack, it just kind of came. Plus, I wear, I've like worn fanny packs unironically for like ten years now. Like, <laughs> why would you want to hold anything? Like, going hands free right. is the best thing ever. For sure, it's so funny. I know, and I tell people just to wear it in the back if you don't want to have it like in the front. You know, you just wear it at the back. It's no big right. Deal. Well, I have a belly, so it actually helps me. It, like, covers the extra you know? quarantine weight. So <laughs> it actually is – it works out all around. <laughs> well, my husband will not watch the show either, but he will watch Survivor with me. So that's reality TV. I'll take it. He did not watch Love Island, although I know he wanted to see a couple scenes with the, you know, the bikinis, of course, which how could I blame him? But yeah. I mean, but that no. car wash was pretty impressive. Yeah, I didn't let him watch that scene. No, no, no. <laughs> like, no, you, you don't deserve this one. Not if you're not going to watch the whole show. You don't get this one. Definitely not. In fact, when I interviewed Lauren, she told me, she's like, you should have seen the stuff that was on the cutting room floor from that car wash scene. It would make your mouth drop. Like, your jaw would be on the floor. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> I talked to Lauren, too, and I couldn't believe it because, like, and I didn't mean to sound shady at all because I thought she was great, but I was like, you are the winner of that challenge. Like, describe the other, you know, performances. And apparently we didn't see a lot because from what we saw, Justine, for me, was the clear winner. Okay. But there was just so much that we didn't see that um, right. the other the, that the guys got to see. Yes. Yeah. They sure did. That, oh, that show was so much fun. I can't wait for it to come back next year. Oh, my God, me too. Well, Erin, um, I'm so glad to meet you and talk Thank to you. you. And um, we'll definitely be doing this again soon. Wait. Good, I hope so. You'll have to come on my Tub Talk sometime as well. Ooh, I'd but love to. I Actually, I might do it. I have a tub in the guest room that I just never use. So um, it's not like a big luxury tub, like I'm kind of a snob, like that I'm used to, so I don't really get in it. <laughs> but I'll, I'll get, I'll cramp a little bit for it. It'll be worth it. That is perfect. And you guys, if you want to keep the conversation going, I'm going to be doing Rose Rewind with Charlie here in a few minutes. I'm going to take a quick break, get some water, and then I'll be back live with him. So yeah, I know. All right. Well, I'll be back and um, watch your next live. Perfect. Well, thank awesome. you so much for having me. You oh my God. Thank you so much for welcoming me. Thank you so much, and uh, I'll see you soon. Sounds good. Bye, everyone. Bye. Have a great night. Thanks.